February 2nd, the feast of the presentation of our Lord when he was 40 days old. My eyes have seen the uh, so your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for rever revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And this is when uh, High Priest Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. This is written by the theologian, our friend uh, Lambrus Gonzu, professor and theologian, the great mother of God, and all the same at the same time, the despotic feast of our Lord and the transfiguration of the Lord is yet another important celebratory station in our church. It celebrates the event of Christ's entry into the Jewish temple of Jerusalem when he was 40, years, uh, 40 days old, and his blessing by Saint Simeon and the venerable old woman, the prophetess Anna. This typical legend, the legal visit of our Lord in the temple of God, has a very great theological significance for the church because, as we will see, it is there that for the first time the much desired coming of the Redeemer for the human race is publicly announced and it was said by the aforementioned righteous Simeon and Anna, prophetic words of the highest value which clearly reveal the divine origin and the saving mission of our Lord Jesus Christ in the world. That's why the Christian Orthodox faith celebrate this holy day brilliantly every year, February 2nd. This is a feast of the presentation. It's very old and goes back to the times, perhaps even earlier than the fifth century. It was originally established in the West to replace the barbaric and pagan festival in order of the hideous, ghastly uh, forest of God Sylvanus, equivalent to the Pan of the ancient Greek religion, and uh, if Greeks the ancient Greeks were pagans, as we know, and uh, the in order to stop the obscene orgies of the worshippers of the false god. According to the Mosaic religion, the parents had to lead to the temple and dedicate each newborn child of God on the 40th day after the child's birth, according to Exodus 13.1. For the faithful Jews, and birth of children was considered, the birth of children was considered, of course, a divine gift, and that this is why they took care to thank God after the purification of the mother's womb after 40 days, as provided by the Mosaic legislation. When the days of this purification are replenished for a son or daughter, offer an unblemished lamb for a burnt offering and a young dove or a turtle dove for sin at the door of the tabernacle, Leviticus 12, 6. The holy parents of our Lord did the same. As devout adherents of the Jewish religion, they strictly observed all the legal ordinances. The Apostle Paul assures us that God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, that he might redeem them under the law, Galatians 4.4, 4, because in all things he owes his brothers the likeness, Hebrews 2.17. Every detail of the Lord's life has great theological and uh, soteriological significance because it proves his real incarnation and consequently our certain salvation. The evangelist Luke, St. Luke, saved in his gospel the event of the entry of the infant Jesus into the temple of Jerusalem. Quote, and when the days of their purification according to the law of Moses were reached, they brought him to Jerusalem to present themselves to the Lord and behold, a man in Jerusalem named Simeon, and this man was righteous and reverent, accepted the prayer of Israel and the Holy Spirit on him, and on him anointed under the Holy Spirit, do not see death before you see Christ the Lord. And he came in the Spirit to the sanctuary and brought the child Jesus to his parents according to the custom of the law concerning him, and took him in his arms and blessed God and said, now you dismiss your servant, Lord, according to your own words in peace, that my eyes have seen your salvation, the one you have prepared in the face of all people, the light of for the revelation of nations and the glory of your people, Israel. And uh, Joseph and his mother marveled and talked about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Miriam, his mother, 
Behold, this man lies in the fall and resurrection of many in Israel, and in a point of conflict, and your soul is pierced by a dagger, as if the meditations of many hearts are revealed. Luke 2.22 We must bear in mind that the Temple of Jerusalem was for the pious Jews a holy place because they believed that the Most High God resided there. Their approach there filled their souls with deep reverence. As soon as they passed the majestic gates of the walled enclosure, they were filled with awe and terror. They were treading in place of the, the place of the presence of the completely inaccessible God. The Jerusalem temple was synonymous with the Jewish religion and a point of reference for every faithful Jew. Without this, the Jewish people could not function, and that is why when it was destroyed in 70 AD by the Roman troops of occupation, the question was raised whether religion could exist without this, the temple, so important was it to the Jews. The temple was the place of tranquility and consolation for all the pious Jews who, dismayed by the uh, unimaginable disrespect and moral degradation of their time, were waiting for God's redemption. They went up to the hill of Zion, Mount Zion, where the temple was built, and prayed with fervor and brokenness to, for the apostasy of the people, and begged with tears for the shortening of the time of the coming of the Messiah. Some had even settled permanently in the numerous adjacent buildings and lived with prayer and fasting waiting for the Savior. Two of them were the righteous Simeon and the holy old woman Anna. Simeon, due to his holiness, was flooded with the Holy Spirit and had the divine information that he would not die before seeing the Messiah. Indeed, the enlightened old saint, inspired by God the Advocate, recognized in the face of the infant brought to the temple by the Holy Family, the awaited Redeemer, and revealed for the first time publicly before a crowd of pilgrims that the awaited Messiah had come. He took in his feeble senile arms a divine infant, and with tears of unspeakable joy raised their eyes to heaven and praised God, who had fulfilled his promise and sent the Redeemer to the world which he had announced through his prophets. He uttered the last word and recorded him of the New Testament known to us all, Now dost thou loose thy slave, the Lord, our Lord. This ode has enormous theological significance. According to the fathers of the church, Simeon addressed God, the paraclete, who had assured him of the coming of the Savior. This graphic passage alone would suffice to pr prove the reality of his divine presence to those who maliciously and mistakenly deny it. He called him Lord, ruling out any suggestion that the Holy Spirit is not a person. His supreme contribution to the process of the salvation of the human race is amply demonstrated. The incarnation of God's word is primarily the work of the Holy Spirit. Luke 135 and Matthew 121. The old saint asks God if he wants to take him from this life because his great expectation has now been fulfilled. The word of God, which he cherished with excessive fervor in his soul, turned out to be true and came true. He was fortunate enough to see with his senile eyes the new age of salvation and grace as a result of God's love for man and his entire creation. He asks to be dismissed from this vain world in peace because the stress and turmoil that sin causes in life are laid aside, and he seeks death because he has a premonition that the death of his death is imminent, that through Christ and his resurrection, death was defeated. It's not annihilation, as the unbelievers glorify, but a passage to eternity. The divine elder Simeon had this information in mind, and that is why he's looking for him. Another important aspect of Simeon's ode is the highlighting of the universality of salvation. He calls the Savior, that is the Messiah, prepared in the presence of all the, the peoples and a light to reveal the na to the nations, Luke 2.32. The righteous old man, under divine inspiration, transcended the petty ethical Jewish concepts and understood the universal salvation of the whole human race. The incarnate God, the Word, came into the world to save all humanity and not just for the Jews, to establish a worldly Jewish kingdom as they expected him 
and are still waiting for him. Saint Simeon, when he finished his thanksgiving ode, blessed the Holy Family and said to the Mother of God that, Behold, this one lies in the fall and resurrection of many in Israel, and it's a, he will be a point of contradiction, and a dagger is going to pierce your soul, as if they were revealing meditations from, from many hearts. Luke 2.34 Prophesying the eternal controversy about the divine person of Christ and, of course, the maternal bitterness of our Virgin Mary because of the divine passion of her Son. The Holy Prophetess Anna spoke the same way. The Holy Evangelist informs us that, I lived for many years after this marriage, seven years after my virginity, and this widow was 84 years old. She did not abstain from the holy place, fasting and praying night and day, Luke 2.36. As soon as she saw the divine infant in the arms of Simeon, filled with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, she said, I trusted in the Lord and spoke of him to all those who receive redemption in Jerusalem. Luke 2.38 This detail is also very important. The woman in the ancient pre-Christian world was completely discredited. Here, in the face of the old prophetess, the marginalized personality of the woman is recognized again. Saint Anna stands worthily next to Simeon and prophetically demonstrates the dawn of the redemption of the world through Christ. The great feast of the transfiguration of the Lord is a good opportunity for all believers to once again glorify the incarnate Son and Word of God, who thanks to his immeasurable uh, charity, left the unfathomable heights of his heavenly throne and became man for to save the human race from the terrible bonds of sin and bitter death. Thanks to our salvation, he who contains the universes in the dragon agreed to rest in the aging arms of the righteous Simeon and receive a blessing from him. He who blesses, pre preserves, and gives life to all creation. So great is the magnitude of divine charity. The Feast of Transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ gives us the, and must give us the certainty that there is no salvation elsewhere, as the Apostle Peter proclaimed with much courage, but only in the many, the manly face of our Savior Christ, whom there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we are saved. Acts 4.12 Let's not look for other false and ineffective saviors, because only he was prepared by the divine will and came to the world as a redeemer of all people and a light for the revelation of nations. Luke 3, 231-32. And of course, this is the feast of the presentation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, this happens with all Orthodox, Christian Orthodox children. On the 40th day, they are presented to the church. And a prayer is said over the uh, mother of the child for her purification. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.